Okay. Um, that was a cool deal yesterday. Um, I thought the guys did an outstanding job playing hard. I thought Aubrey did an excellent job leading the way and, um, you know, just a, a really cool experience to kind of be able to step back and watch from afar, but, but he was excellent leading and, um, you know, I thought he handled you guys a lot better than me as well. So uh, we're going to probably try to do that more often. Uh, you guys are a lot nicer to him too, Gary. <laughs> you guys go ahead. Raise your hand when we get started, guys. This is a heck of a deal. No questions. I like it. <laughs> Adam, we'll start with you. Hey, Sean. I'm uh, just curious, like, what was – you know, what was it like to see the way the locker room just reacted for Aubrey, uh, you know, before and after the game yesterday? I think it's a real credit to the investment that he makes in in the people, um, the, the coaches, the players, this organization. Um, when you give a lot, you get a lot back. And I thought that was what was reflected. Um, you know, really what's been, I thought, awesome really about the last two weeks is it's such a great reflection of the character and the quality of people that we have. You know, guys like Aubrey are players even just watching a lot of the guys that haven't participated, the support that they are giving to their teammates, the, you know, the mentorship, the excitement that is so authentic, um, all those things I think were on display. But I, I think at the end of the day, the biggest thing that I noticed, Adam, was um, when you give out a lot, um, you get a lot back. And, and that was certainly reflected for Aubrey. And um, it's because of the way that he authentically pours into these people. Uh, Bo Limmers had a pretty clean preseason the last two weeks. I'm curious, like, what you thought of the way he's started things off. I think the same thing you just mentioned. You know, he's he's gotten a lot of work. We put a lot on that center position. Um, he's got a great demeanor. He's real steady, conscientious. Um, he's getting more and more confident with some of the communication that's required, especially, you know, you look at it even in the practice settings where – um, you guys are out there, but you don't really, you know, see all the little things he's doing. I thought yesterday was good. And, and you know, Coach Minner was mixing it up. I mean, that was a, there was a lot of pressure, a lot of different things that required communication, movement, um, blitzes front side, blitzes back side, some zero blitzes. And I've been really pleased with Bo. He's taking steps in the right direction. And I think uh, Ryan Wendell, Zach Cromer, and then when Coach Munchak's been here, they've done an excellent job with that group. And Bo is a reflection of that. And do you still expect Matthew to practice tomorrow? You know, that I'm not sure yet. He, you know, it, I'll, I'll talk to Reggie. He he was supposed to, he, he can throw and do some of those things as far as just some of the movement, um, if he's feeling good. So I, we haven't decided that yet, Adam, but uh, the, the arrow is pointing up and he's feeling good as it relates to the hamstring tightness from last week. Sarah? Hey, Sean, um, obviously you handed over the, the head coaching duties yesterday, but that's not the first time you've kind of helped your assistants in a way. Um, you spoke highly of Raheem. Why is it so important to you when obviously that means you're losing coaches to head coaching jobs or other positions, but why is it so important to you to give them those opportunities? So I was treated. Um, I had people that were willing to put their arm around me. I saw great examples of that. And I don't know if I truly appreciated how special it was until I look back on it, Sarah. I, I by no means am nearly the quality of what those guys that have invested in poured into me and gave me opportunities that, you know, really just aren't afforded um, based on some of the experience that I had accumulated at the times. And so um, I think similar to what I was saying about Aubrey, you know, I, I think what you give out, you get back. And what's been great about it, Sarah, is there's nothing that when you're in the right you know, place and you're, you have the right heart, there's nothing that's more, um, you know, that, that you take more pride in than seeing all these guys that have done such a great job elevating, whether that's from within or externally. Is it is it hard to lose guys? Of course. But, you know, you mentioned Raheem. He's one of my best friends in the world. He wanted to be a head coach. And to see him get an opportunity to do that, you know, we still FaceTime all the time and um, and we're messing with each other and I and I, you miss him. But, man, what a what an awesome opportunity that's earned. And Zach and Jimmy Lake that are with him and some of the other coaches. And, you know, you talk about other people that have gotten these chances. But I think when you do that, you attract really high quality people. And while we're losing people, we have some really, um, you know, awesome new people that are going to continue to elevate the players and the coaches and, and just our overall standard of how we want to operate. And so. There's a lot of guys that you guys will get more exposure to that are here for the first year. You'll get to see what a special coach Chris Shula is. And, um, you know, those are the things that I'm excited about. Um, and that's that's really why. That's what it boils down to, Sarah. 
Um, and is there anyone you expect to get back at practice this week? Any of those week to week guys? You know, I think they'll start taking place in some of the above the next stuff, some of the jog throughs. Um, I'll get with Reggie a little bit later on. I know guys are making good progress, but there's nothing finite as it relates to those main guys that I think you're probably talking about. But they are looking more and more positive, um, you know, especially as it relates to starting to gear our focus towards Detroit here in the near future. Thank you. You're welcome. Gary. Wouldn't be a wouldn't be a Zoom without a muted Gary. <laughs> been too long it's too i know long. <laughs> i'm with you <laughs> um how concerned are you about stafford not being able or you not know you know not him not you not being sure that he can practice i'm not concerned i'm not um you know i think gary um you know one of the things that's great is he's accumulated all this experience um He's going to be ready to go and to prepare against Detroit. And if we miss a couple days this week, if that's the approach that we take on the safer side, he'll still have a you know a couple you know two and a half weeks of preparation for Detroit. Sometimes I think those breaks for these guys can almost be beneficial, you know, to keep them you know just fresh mentally. You know, the, the toll of camp is real, and especially when you talk to these guys. And I'm not saying Matthew feels this way; he'd have to tell you. But you talk to Aaron, you talk to the Whitworths of the world, and you talk about just the you know, the, the drudgery of training camp when you're, when there is some monotony, you know, and that, and it's hard to be able to stay locked in and do those things. Sometimes those natural breaks keep you fresh. Um, and that's where really what I think, that's why I'm not concerned. Now, do you want him to be able to get the work? Of course, but I'm not concerned based on what I understand, um, you know, the tightness is and, and Aaron on the safe side of caution for this week, if that's what we end up having to do. And I think you were asked last week if you were confident at this point that Stetson could be the backup uh, if need be for going into Detroit with Jimmy out. Are And you had said it's still in the evaluation phase. Are you, where does that stand now? Are you confident yeah. he could be the guy? I think he's done a really good job of taking steps in the right direction. You know, all we talk about Gary is making progress. And, you know, what does that progress look like? You know, I, Chris Peterson sent me a really cool uh, visual the other day where there was, you know, about six cups in alignment. And, you know, there was one that said, this is progress where it was kind of filled up and it was a consistent buildup. Then there was one where it was like a buildup, then it kind of dropped down, but then it built back up and it said, this is also progress. And then a kind of similar deal where it was up down, but at the end of the day, there was still this kind of, you know, it was, it was upwards at the end, even though every single day it wasn't always, you know, tangible, that progress. What's the point that I'm making? He is progressing, Gary. I've been really pleased. He hasn't gotten a ton of reps. He's gotten a ton of reps in these preseason games, but Jimmy's taking the majority of the other reps. What I was really pleased that he did is when Matthew ended up coming out after a couple of periods against Dallas, I thought Stetson came in and did a magnificent job when he wasn't planning on practicing. Um, I thought that was really beneficial for him as well, doing it against the opponent where we had a couple turnovers. Um, and it was after the game, uh, but he was able to bounce back. I thought he saw their coverage as well. I thought he made good decisions for the most part. And then I thought yesterday was was a lot of the same. And, and I will tell you this too, you know, you give Coach Minner a ton of credit. There was a lot of stuff they did pressure-wise that we just don't carry the inventory of a lot of the better answers that we would typically have for our players in some of those um, all-out blitz situations or the way that they wanted to be able to call a game. And I thought, you know, given the parameters, Stetson did a nice job and and I was pleased with the progress. That's what we want to continue to be able to see um, for us to feel good about that. But it's trending in the right direction, Gary. Uh, and then finally from me, uh, J.J. Lapp, uh, you know, what, if, if at all, message did you have for him, you know, when he came in the building and, and what did you see, uh, what have you seen through camp and, and last night that makes you think he may have a, a future with you guys. Yeah, I mean, I think he, you know, he's got a great spirit. You know, I, I give a ton of credit to, you know, John McKay and our scouting staff and our, our, you know, and James Gladstone. They do a great job identifying a lot of these undrafted free agents. And J.J. Lapp was a guy that, you know, he's got speed. Um, he's got a great demeanor and disposition. I'm sure he was a fun guy. If you guys talk to him afterwards, I mean, he is a true Jersey guy through and through, isn't he? I mean, but you love him. His demeanor and his spirit is great. Here's what I think. I think he's gotten better, Gary. I think Eric Yarber and, and Nate Shieldhouse and Rob Calvary have done a phenomenal job of elevating that group. And they see such a great example in Cooper and guys like D-Rob and Pooh 
and he's been out there. Um, but it was fun to see him make a play. There was a similar play that we had last week where it led to a turnover and he actually fell on the release. And for him to come back and um, get the coverage that we were looking for and be able to have the speed to finish, it was a great throw and catch. And, um, you know, in the excitement that you saw from him, but also his teammates for him, that was what was great. Um, but he's progressing, and I like what I've seen from him, J from JJ. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Stokes. Hey, Sean, wanted to ask you about Cam Kinchins. Hadn't seen him out at practice, uh, either joint practice with the Cowboys or some of the ones leading into the preseason game, and wasn't out there much, if at all, I think, in the in the game yesterday. He wasn't. We've been holding him out just for precautionary reasons. He's going to go this week. He'll be a full participant. Um, he's done a great job. You know, it was really one of those deals that we didn't feel like it was necessary to expose him to possible injury. He's going to be a guy that's going to be a factor for us. Um, and so until he was feeling all the way back to health, um, that was why we erred on the side of caution. And, and we expect him to get a full workload with the two practices here and then the one on Thursday against the Texans. And then Jalen McCall, I know is someone we've asked you about before, but for him to show up again like he did yesterday, what stood out to you about his production overall level of play? I think I'm just not surprised anymore. I mean, he's consistent, Stu. He's a man. Um, got a great demeanor. You know, I think we've got some really impressive young rookies that just, you know, I think the best way I can describe it, they're men. Um, they're, they've got a mature, uh, grown demeanor. There's an ability to communicate them, be, communicate with them because of the way they understand this game and some of the things that we're asking within the scheme. He plays with a physical toughness. He's got a mental toughness. I, I'm a big fan of Jalen McCullough, and, and it only continues to grow um, just by the way he handles himself. And, and you know, you, uh, you guys have heard me talk about feeling certain defensive players when you're out there. Um, you feel him, um, and he's continued to show up. I was happy for him. Thank you. He better have made that pick, though, right? I mean, come on, babe. I mean, that's that's more on the uh, the, the tip there, but – but he's done a lot of good stuff. But the, the pick wasn't the most impressive thing he did last night by any stretch. I'd crush him if he didn't catch that one. <laughs> George. Hey, Sean. Um, I, uh, I, I hear you on the progress with uh, Stetson. Um, at what point, though, in this preseason process, do you have to make the decision whether or not you can roll with him and we specifically weeks one and two at the backup or – whether you guys go in a different direction, like what does that timeline and process look like? I mean, we'll use all the time that we have. So whatever that day is, you know, after the, the, you know, the Houston game, I guess it'd be that Tuesday. Is that what it is? Um, and really what I try to do, Jordan, is take it a little bit at a time, you know, and that's where if you really said, okay, are you worried about Matthew? If we have to err on the side of caution, it's going to give us more chances to evaluate Stetson and, um, and also Jimmy in some of these practice settings. And so, if that's what we have to do, but I, it really, I, I don't necessarily have a timeline. I know the latest timeline is, is as it relates to that, but if he continues to progress, Jordan, you'll be pleased. Um, and that's, and that's all we can hope for. And then, and then you're always, uh, you know, just evaluating each day, but, but to his credit, you know, where he's come from and, you know, and the way he has acted, interacted and responded to all the different things thrown at him. I, I've been proud of Stetson. I really have. Um, and then wanted to ask you about Zach Thomas. Um, I know you kind of inadvertently brought him up last week, but I uh, wanted, wanted to see what your evaluation was of him uh, sort of getting thrown into some more reps than maybe he usually would right now. Yeah, I, I've been pleased. You know, I think he and Warren McLennan have really maximized getting more reps than they you know would have otherwise because of some of the injuries we've had up front. Um, you know, Zach has athleticism. He has snap. He can really come out of his hips and, and get great removal in the run game. I think he's continuing to gain awareness, you know, with just some of the things we ask in protection or just as the picture changes based on unforeseen looks. Um, but he's playing with more of an understanding and it shows in how he's played. I think he's played well in each of the last two preseason games. Um, Ryan Wendell has done a really good job. He's a good teacher. He and Zach Cromer and, and Munch, like I've mentioned, um, and, and I've been pleased with Zach. He's conscientious. He's tough, um, you know, and, and he doesn't have a, a ton of experience, but I think this experience he's used to, to really continue to, you know, move in the right direction. And I know it's cliche, but it really is only about progress. And are you progressing forward or are you not? And he has certainly maximized getting a lot more work. And, and I have been pleased with Zach. And, and Warren is another guy that I would want to mention that I think falls in that bucket in that category especially with a guy that's really comfortable on the right. You've seen him play on the left side as well. Um, and I'm seeing him really stretch himself past, you know, what, 
those manageable um, expectations are. And I think that's where the real growth is occurring. And, and you're seeing that in both of those players. And then last for me, um, I know he will, won't be playing in the in the preseason, but with Tutu Atwell, um, we've seen some thing, different things at practice with uh, just different ways you guys are, are using him. Um, and then also other guys rotating to compete as well. What do you see as Tutu's role for you guys this year, or is that still taking shape? Yeah, to be determined. You know, to, the, the value Tutu provides Jordan is that he knows because he's so smart, he can play all three of our receiver spots. We're obviously a heavy 11 personnel outfit. He brings the dynamic trait of being able to stretch the field vertically. But I think what a lot of people learned last year is he's got good aggressive hands. You know, he plays big for a guy that measures smaller. He's got good length and catch radius and he's making catches away from his frame on in breaking routes in between the numbers. And, um, you know, he's got a lot of different things that he can provide. I've seen him compete in the run game, um, you know, but it is to be determined. And, you know, the value that he provides is, or some of those traits and the understanding of, uh, you know, where he fits, whether he's playing F, X, or Z. Thanks, Sean. You're welcome. Uh, we'll wrap up with you, Dan. Hey, Sean. Uh, so the inset in-helmet communication has come into college football for the first time this season. So I've been using the NFL camps to sort of get some info. How did you get good? How did you develop the skill of being effective on the radio? I think if you ask the quarterbacks, they maybe would feel differently about my effectiveness on the radio. Um, it's experience. You know, it's all I've known. You know, and that's where I, I remember talking to Cliff Kingsbury because he's a good friend about when he was transitioning to Arizona, you know, and his experience had only been collegiately and, and just how much easier it'll be when he has the ability to just press a button and communicate for 25 seconds to the quarterback um, you know, or 10 seconds, you know, when you're coming out of a clock stoppage, when that play clocks at, at uh, 25. So he, uh, I, I think, you know, it's experience, you know, comfortable using the technology. I think Brendan Berger would tell you sometimes that there's a lot of user errors with me and those mics when I lose my mind, but it's only about experience. And then really just being, you know, aware of, all right, how much time do I have being able to get it in? What is the vernacular and the verbiage that allows you to communicate things in a seamless manner, um, and then I do kind of like the fact that quarterbacks can't talk back to me. You know, Matthew hates that. So that, that's kind of a fun thing. I, it's probably a one-way communication as well. And um, they can't say anything back. They just have to listen. Okay. Uh, one other technical question I had. So when does the uh, headset click back on at the end of a play? Like say you're in two minute or something where you're, you're trying to go fast. How quickly can you get right? As back soon on as that? they reset the play clock, okay. you know, so as soon as you see that play clock after the play ends at, at 40, then I have the ability to press that button and I've got 25 seconds. So it's a combination of when the play clock is reset and then they have a technical person that ends up resetting it. So it enables you because they, they cut it off with 15 seconds left in the play clock. Okay. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. You're welcome. You got it. Appreciate you, coach. All right. Thanks, guys.